Alrighty. Okay, folks, um, welcome in. I'm so glad to see so many people show up for my little session. Um, we'll see if it's helpful at all, but um, as I was sitting down to um, talk to everybody about, you know, rehydration, um, I started thinking about what is it um, in particular that makes us feel unhydrated. <laughs> so, um, you know, at this point in the semester and as we're kind of working through that last month, what is causing both us and our students to kind of um, lose that uh, energy that we had at the very beginning of the semester. Um, and so this presentation um, kind of assumes that we're all feeling um, some level of burnout. And so I wanted to start this with a couple questions about, you know, where you are at right now um, in terms of your fatigue. And then we'll have one more um, question in the next slide about your stress levels. And, um, you know, this is probably not surprising to any of you folks that we are kind of at the other end of the spectrum in terms of our fatigue levels. So we're really experiencing that three to five. Um, and, you know, this is just everybody in the room right now. And so um, my hope is with this is that we can start feeling a little bit of um, empathy for each other and feeling like, you know, we're all kind of in, in a similar boat here in terms of feeling that, that fatigue. Um, and so we'll do one more. As a professor, how would you rate your current stress levels? So one is that I'm experiencing little to no stress and a five is the most I'm the most stressed I can be. So you'll get another um, rating here and we'll kind of see those real time. Um, and again, not very surprising, but we are all scoring kind of on that other side here of the of the continuum. We have a two, that's wonderful. <laughs> I'm glad someone is feeling a two, um, but you know, we, we are feeling stressed, we're feeling tired, we're feeling stressed, and we are the professors. Um, I would wager to say that if you ran something like this in your classes, you'd be seeing some similar numbers in your students. So if you are feeling burned out right now, if you are feeling like um, our little Lego person on this, <laughs> this slide, um, I, I'm wagering to say that your students likely feel the same way. And so, during this um, during during this presentation, I'd like you to think about yourself too, and what you need right now in order to regenerate, regenerate, ooh, <laughs> re-energize and regenerate. I was trying to put those two together, um, and how you can actually incorporate those things into your classes, um, because I also feel very strongly that if our students are um, um, feeling that their professors are burned out as well, then, you know, they a lot people respond to the energy that you, you bring to a room. So think about those things that make you feel re-energized in the classroom and bring those things into the classroom. Um, for me, art really kind of um, energizes me, regenerates me. Um, that is not the case for everybody, so I'm not going to say that you should do an art, uh, you know, activity in your class, but um, something uh, like if I was teaching right now and feeling this way, I might bring something like that into the classroom um, to get us, you know, a little less cer cerebral, to change the feeling a little bit, have students doing something different, something new, something that excites um, you and might in turn excite them. Um, and so I was doing some research for this session. And I found a really fantastic study that was done very recently. I think it was actually published September 24. Um, so people are, and I really wanted to look for something that was recent because the stress and burnout that we were dealing with in years prior is completely different than the stress and burnout that we are dealing with right now. And so I wanted to see some current stuff there. Um, and so this one study that was done, a creative arts in intervention to reduce burnout, 
um, examined the effect of several creative arts interventions, sessions for student reporting burnout. And I know I already said um, that this wasn't going to be a session where I told you that you need to do art in the classroom. Um, I understand we're all from very different disciplines. We all have our different comfort zones. Um, but what I wanted to do is take some lessons from this particular area of study, which is kind of an integrative arts understanding. Um, and it, it, it brings a lot of stuff from art therapy. Um, but what I found, I think, can be applied to most classes. So there are three sessions that students took part in in this study. Um, and again, these were students who reported feeling burned out. And so the first um, session was their self-awareness session. And the students were asked to create symbols um, to represent their identities, but in particular, their learning identities. We had session number two, which was about um, stress management, and students actually depicted themselves climbing a mountain um, artistically. And they had to really break down the stress that they were experiencing and how they cope with their stress and achieve their goals. So it's not just picturing that stress that they're experiencing, but that they're actually getting through the stress and the techniques that they use to get through stress. And then the third um, session was a purpose of learning session where students had to um, envision what it looked like for them post-graduation. They mapped the skill, the exact skills that they would need to get to that point or that they felt that they needed to get to that point. And then the most important part was really the sharing out of that um, vision and the steps that they felt like they needed to take to get there to their fellow um, participants. And so um, this quote from the study um, really kind of highlights those things that participants took from these sessions. Um, so students perceived that these creative sessions, um, wow, that's not how English works, <laughs> were instrumental in deepening the comprehension of their learning processes, bolstering their study-related confidence, and effectively applying their acquired knowledge in practical scenarios. Participant feedback highlighted the role of group counseling in fostering communication and mutual understanding, potentially leading to the formation of supportive social networks. This could mitigate the effects of academic burned out, burnout. And I really like this quote because at no point um, are they really like, you know, the, the students needed the art <laughs> to, um, you know, develop these feelings or to, to um, uh, come away with these, these takeaways. But the reality was that the asking of them to think about their learning profile or, you know, um, the skills and the things that they were developing that would help them achieve their goals or thinking about their um, identity as a student and as a learner. And then the act of bringing a group of people together going through similar things and talking about those things, those were the things that helped them. And so as I was putting this together, I was thinking about the habits of mind and I was thinking in particular self-regulated learning. And this is all self-regulated learning, you know, thinking about what it looks like for them specifically to learn and to build skills and to achieve their goals. And so I think there's some strategies that we can steal from this um, session even if you're, or from the study, and even if you're not going to do, you know, an art project where they have to draw a mountain and visualize themselves getting over stress. But what I'm talking about is there's three kind of takeaways that I'm getting here um, is that part of your class can be helping students build an understanding of their learning process. Um, it can be helping your students building an understanding of their learning purpose. And you can make this as, you know, um, big and overarching as you want, but you can also bring it down to the class level as well. Because I would wager to say that maybe a lot of the feeling of burnout that students experience at this point in the semester is um, related to them not having a clear understanding that what they're doing currently 
is getting them to a new level in terms of their learning and in terms of realizing their goals. And so helping students understand their purpose, yes, in college, but their purpose in taking the course, I think is really important at this point in kind of um, resisting that feeling of burnout that students get where they're like, I just don't see the point of this. It just seems like a lot of work. You know, midterms are coming up, finals are coming up. There's a lot at stake for them. There's a lot on the table. So pausing things, stepping back and taking time to be like, what have we learned and what are you taking away from it? And how is this building to a conclusion for you? Um, and then helping visualize students visualize that process of getting to the end goal and meeting their their overarching goals as a college student. And all of this is kind of wrapped under this idea that I have, which is that, you know, in order to feel a sense of belonging, in order to resist burnout and stress, students really need to feel like they're part of a supportive social network, which it can be really easy to say, you know, their clubs, their orgs, their friends are their supportive network, but our, their classes and their um, classmates and their professors can also be part of that so supportive social network. And I know for me, it has been transformational to be around people that just recognize that things are hard and um, that we can talk about the strategies that we can use or the skills that we're building during these hard times to get through and to cope and to meet kind of that next goal line. And so I think these supportive social networks, if you take anything away from my session today, I hope that you take away that um, your class is part of their supportive social networks and it can be very powerful for you to just come in as a professor and say, how are we doing? I know it's a really difficult time of the semester and what do you need right now? I feel like I need X, Y, Z. Can I hear some feedback about, about what people feel like they need right now? And so um, I have a whole bunch of ideas that I just threw together as I was thinking about, okay, I'm a professor right now. I'm feeling burnout. My students are feeling burnout. What are some ideas um, that come to mind for to switch things up, to do something different in class? Um, and so I collected these. I can um, post them on our collab website later on, so you don't feel like you need to, you know, grab them right now. But it's everything from, you know, finding moments to make class less all up here and also involve hands-on activities, physical movement, um, a check-in with like a Google form or Slido like I use today can be really powerful just for students to be able to say, you know, or see that other people are going through similar things as they are currently. Um, and then some tried and true things that I use in my own classes that I think students respond really well to. So I put in, you know, a fishbowl class discussion where students, a group of students are in the middle and they're the ones discussing. And then the group of students on the outside are observing and taking notes and then they switch um, without professor facilitation, which can be really tricky, but also very um, empowering for students to kind of have to do that type of discussion without having us um, mediate. Um, uh, Matt, Matt actually uh, inspired um, the research scavenger hunt because he does those in the library sometimes um, where you have a particular topic. You have students uh, talk to a librarian. You have students go grab, um, you know, a journal or a book to all or, or a little, have a little checklist of what they need to do in the library to do like a little research scavenger hunt that gets them moving, that changes the flavor of the class for that for that time period. Hannah, I just want to jump in because we are at time and I just we can keep talking and you can keep talking about the stuff on the slide. I just want to give people who need to move on to the next thing in their agenda an opportunity to to bow out and I'm going to stop the recording now too. Um, oh, can I just uh, say